And here we go once again, ladies and gentlemen. This bout is scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the welterweight division. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, a combat sample fighter standing six feet, one inch tall. Weighing it officially 169 and three-quarter pounds, his professional record stands at 11 victories and six defeats from Kiev, Ukraine. Here is Vladimir, the professor of Panasenko. And next is opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. A mixed martial artist standing 5 feet 11 inches tall. He weighed an officially 170 and 3 quarter pounds and brings a veteran record of 24 victories. 12 defeats into the cage tonight from Chelmsford, Essex, England. Here is Jack the Stone Mason! <laughs> Referee in charge once again, Rich Mitchell. Rich Mitchell will be looking after the fighters for the next three rounds as we start this welterweight Ready? contest here Ready? at Cage Warriors Fight Night 9 in a man Jordan. Jack Mason in the black shorts. Vladimir Apanasenko in the red. Nice leg kick to start out there from Jack. Yeah, significant reach advantage for Apanasenko. And there he skims the head of Jack Mason with an early right hand. And there we go, Jack Mason opens up with the right hand, immediately landing. Well, this is what he wanted to do against Ali Arish in Liverpool and, and what he felt he didn't do effectively enough, and that was let those hands go. We know he's got power in them when he, when he does it. Yeah, I mean, he hits so tremendously hard. He just, for some reason, in a lot of the fights, seems to get drawn into a counter-punching mode. And it's, it's, you know, it hasn't worked out brilliantly for him, but when he throws, he is so dangerous. Cage Warriors Fight Night 9 brought to you by our sponsors, London Fight Store and Kia. Please do check them out online. While you're there, why not send us a tweet, hashtag CWFC Jordan. Let us know what you're thinking of tonight's fights. Let us know what you're looking forward to. The rest of the Cage Warriors schedule, 2013 big events in Newcastle, and of course, Dublin on New Year's Eve. Panasenko taking the center of the cage now. Yeah, very long, very wiry figure. Very good chops on the ground, as you'd expect. Gets his hips out really quick off his back for those submission attempts. So if it does go to the ground, Mason will need to be wary of those. Looking quite light on his feet for a big man. And Jack Mason's corner, calling for some action, calling for him to take the initiative. As we said, Josh, that's what he needs to do if he wants to score some points here early against Vladimir Apanasenko. Both guys winging with some big shots. Nobody really finding the mark too much yet. And there's that rugby-style entry from Mason immediately earning the takedown. He does change level and time it so well indeed. And let's see what Apanasenko can do from this half guard. Mason staying glued to the Russian. He just bulldozes guys into the cage with those takedowns. Pinning a Panasenko between the cage and the mat. I mean, if you can time those as a guy is coming into strike, you're in on his hips regardless, and there's no way he can go backwards as fast as you can go forwards. And, you know, more often than not, it's such a very successful takedown. Training at Tsunami Gym and BKK, we know Jack Mason is no stranger to a bit of submission it's grappling, but he's got a very, very dangerous combat sambo game to look out there, look out for there yeah, against I mean, Vladimir Panasenko. Jack Mason has a very good squeeze. If he gets in on someone's neck, in on the guillotines, you know, he, he really can uh, put people away with those, but guard restored for a Panasenko. He's going to start looking for some grips and some ties, I would venture. Some nice short elbows here from Mason. If you remember, that's what he put Matt in away with. Yeah, I mean, this is where Mason has spent huge portions of his MMA career, is in the guard of other fighters, grinding them out against the cage, putting, you know, your forehead in their head, making it very unpleasant for them, very nasty, very gritty. And, uh, you know, more often than not, he does grind his way out. But Mason looking very surprised that the referee has split them there. Well, Rich Mitchell had mentioned on, on a couple of occasions that he would like to see a little bit more action. He felt on that occasion that he wasn't doing 
and he resets the fighters in the center of the cage. A lot of movement with the hands from Panasenko. Not too much head movement from either fighter now, though, just becoming a tiny bit static. Mason came close with a straight right down the pipe there. It's an important fight for Jack Mason. You know, he was on a, a very strong winning streak prior to that loss to Ali Arish. Mm, four he fought... I was just going to say four fights in a row for him over Better Angel, Inman, Reuter, and Roberts. A real murderous row of welterweights that he ran through there. He wants to put that loss to Ali Reach behind him now and have another crack at the top of the Cage Warriors welterweight division, which admittedly is wide open and stacked. Oh, and there are Panasenko immediately adapting, saying, if you're going to change level and come in on me, I'm going to make you think a knee is there. Overhand right from Mason, didn't quite land there. Panasenko winging some shots. Yeah, not really in range though, not really closing the distance as he throws them, really just winging them out there. Bit of a flying knee attempt there from Panasenko. Yeah, and Mason immediately taking the opportunity to close the distance, but closing seconds here. And that's all she wrote for the first round of this welterweight contest. Good first round for Jack Mason, you know, he landed early, that'll give him a bit of confidence with his hands, and when he committed to the takedown, you know, he scored it almost instantaneously. Perhaps a little bit unlucky with the stand-up, but, you know, a good first round there for the man from uh, Chelmsford. As we mentioned earlier on, Panasenko, an economics professor, Jack Mason also works in the financial industry, so... You've got to be thinking if either of those two are after a submission or knockout of the night bonus, they'll be able to invest it wisely. <laughs> Big opportunity for a Panasenko here. You know, Jack Mason, uh, as we said, a fixture of the Cage Warriors welterweight division. And to get what many people would regard as an upset here for a Panasenko would be uh, a pretty big career move. Yeah, I mean, I mean, 17 fights is, is a lot of experience, but as we said, you know, very mixed bag of fighters on the Russian domestic circuit. It's very hard to really establish the kind of level and, and some of the records. So, you know, a good, uh, good platform here at Cage Warriors Fight Night it's, uh, 9 for Panasenko to state his case. And talking about experience, it would be remiss not to mention Jack Mason's near 45, near 45 record. He really has put the hours in in the cage over the years, Josh. He's one of the most active fighters in the UK, certainly the most active fighter on the Cage Warriors roster right now. Possibly one of the most active Cage Warriors fighters of all time. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think the only downside of that is he spends nearly all of his time in actual fight camps. And, you know, I think occasionally it would be nice to go away, have some downtime, work on some very skill set related things rather than constantly thinking, right, I've got to be in condition, I've got to make weight, I've got to get my sparring in. You know, just occasionally take a bit of that time off to, to, to regroup and refocus. He did have a big weight cut prior to this fight. But, that, but it, you know, that's something that he moved down to welterweight, you know, quite a few fights ago now, and he's really started to, to get this weight cut under control. He does so much of it with diet now um, that, that he really is down around the mark where he needs to be to make it as painless as possible. An errant low kick there. Jack Mason caught a Panasenko low. He's going to be good to go, though. Referee Rich Mitchell admonishing him slightly. But we are back underway here at Cage Warriors Fight Night 9. There, Mason looking for that right hand that served him well in the first. Hasn't landed it since, unfortunately. Going low with the right hand that time. And another bulldozer takedown from Jack Mason. Yeah, he's so fast with them and immediately looking for an overhook was a Panasenko. But as we said, this is a game Mason spends so much time doing. So comfortable in this position, as we said, nearly 40 fights to his name, and many of his fights have, have seen him in this position, dishing out the punishment. And you can hear in the corner, Sean Carter, who, of course, contested so well for the lightweight belt recently on Cage Warriors, just shouting for Jack Mason to keep his hips square, keep his posture under control, and fight those grips, all the kind of things you should be doing at this point in the fight. Great advice there, coming from the corner of Jack Mason. Mason looking to land a couple of short shots, score some points, do some damage. We've seen him cause havoc with elbows from this position before. You can see a Panasenko is very slowly creating that angle. 
And there's good work the elbow from Mason. From Mason. And another one in his corner calling for more. I believe that's opened oh, the cut on the forehead of a Panasenko. on the forehead of a Panasenko. And let's see if Jack Mason can really put the pressure on here. Reminiscent of how he finished Matt Inman. Mason raining down elbows. Panasenko not liking this at all. Yeah, the blood is going to be going in his eyes here. And the referee decides that is enough. Jack Mason earns the stoppage he was after. Jack Mason, prophetic in his pre-fight interview. He said he wanted a stoppage in the first or second round, and he got it there with a series of devastating elbow strikes. Yeah, I mean, he, you know, he wasn't worried about what a Panasenko was going to throw off his back. Let's have a look at some of these replays. Once he got in the guard, you know, he just bulldozed forward. He stacked his opponent up against the cage, and he landed some of those absolutely torturous elbows. And once the first one landed, you could see it was a... Uh, you know, I want to say red rag to a bull and make the blood reference, but, you know, it, it, was, uh, it was a light bulb for him, and he just threw them with so much intensity. Clearly smelling blood like a shark there was Jack Mason, and he did not let up for a second. Panasenko being seen to by our doctors now. Safety of our fighters, the number one priority here at Cage Warriors. It looks to just be superficial damage to the face of the Panasenko from those elbows. And that's going to be a very happy Jack Mason coming away from Jordan with a win. As we said, this Cage Warriors welterweight division is wide open. And a stoppage like that puts him right back in the mix, Josh. Yeah, it certainly does. A lot of things to consider in this welterweight division, but it's nice to see Jack Mason back with that sort of form. Three minutes, round number two, stoppage to the strikes for your winner by TKO victory, Jack the Stone Mesa! Jack Mason posing once again with the Jordanian flag there. He definitely earned himself a bit of support on the way to the cage. The Jordanian fans really appreciating that supporting gesture from Jack Mason.